Hi, and welcome to another Messy Church to Science video with me, Dr. Dave. You might have noticed a bit of difference from some of the earlier videos I've done. We're not in my kitchen uh, today. We're outdoors in the garden. It's a beautiful sunny spring day. I can feel the warmth of the sun on my face. And I thought we'd come outside and have a look at a few things in my garden. Let me show you around a little bit. It's springtime and lots of things are starting to come to life. There's blossom on the cherry tree at the bottom of our garden. And although a vegetable patch looks a little bit bare at the moment, soon things will be starting to grow. My wife's the better gardener than me, so please don't ask me what all the plants are. And then as we look up the garden, we see that there are some daisies starting to come on the grass. I don't know if you like daisies or not. Maybe you like making daisy chains, but here's a close-up of some of them. Beautiful yellow and white. In a few weeks' time, the lawn will be covered with lots of them. And there's a walk up the garden, we've got a beautiful yellow bush that always comes out early in the spring. And then these beautiful little yellow flowers on the ground as well. I wonder what you can find in your garden. You know, just by using your eyes, you can see the wonderful things that there are in creation. But if you want to take a closer look, you can use one of these. This is a little microscope that you can attach to your phone camera and it will magnify things so much you can see the very, very small features that are in the flowers. I'm going to show you some of the insides of flowers that I've seen in my garden. Let's have a look at this daffodil using my mobile phone camera. It's one I found in my garden, one of the spring flowers there. You just bring it up close and you can see those stamen which surround the central stalk of the flower. have got little dust particles on them. Those dust particles are pollen that the bee collects. Now let's have a look with the mobile phone microscope that I've added to my camera. You can buy these quite cheaply off the internet. Just look at the detail on the stamen. All the little dust particles of the pollen that's there. I've just taken this video by pressing record on my phone camera through the microscope. It's amazing the detail you can see all the little hairs and all the little dusts of the pollen, which is what sticks to the bee and the bee collects when it visits the flowers and takes back to its nest to feed its young, its larvae. With the phone microscope, you can take still pictures too. Here's some that I took. Look at the detail of the little drops of pollen that the bee collects when it visits its flower to feed to its young. You might have noticed already this year that bees are starting to visit the flowers. They're collecting nectar, sweet sticky substance inside the flowers and the pollen gets rubbed off onto the hairs on the bee and they take it back to their nests to feed to their young larvae. But bees are under a bit of pressure. There aren't so many of them around these days. So I thought today we'd make a home for bees so that we could try and make our garden friendly for bees, not only with the flowers that we plant there, but also the spaces we give for bees to nest. Now these aren't for the big, these aren't big beehives that you might have seen on the TV, but most bees live on their own. So these are houses for solitary or single bees. And I'll show you how we can make one now. The design of our bee house is similar to that you can find under the experiment bees on page 174 of Messy Church to Science. 
you'll need several pieces of wood. One for the base, two pieces for the sides, one for the top, one for the back, and two thicker pieces to put inside it to make a home for the bees. You can see the sizes on the picture I'm showing. These are just some wood that I cut off, some pallets that I found in my shed. But if you haven't got any wood and you can't cut it up, you could use a tin box or uh, a flower pot. Although it'd be good if we could get away from using plastic in the gardens because it isn't very good for the environment either. You'll also need some nails and a hammer to put them all together. If you're small, you might need a bigger person to help you cut up the wood and bash the nails in, but perhaps they'll let you have a go. First, take the two side paces and attach them to the base like I'm showing you in the picture. Use some of the nails to fix them in place. Then put the top on. I've made my top slightly overhang the sides a little bit so water can drip off it. Attach it with some nails again. Then put the back on and secure it with a full few nails. Leave a gap at the top to let some air circulate so the inside can dry out. Then put two thicker blocks of wood inside. These are going to be where the bees can make their home. You need to set the blocks of wood out again so that you can drill some holes in them. Again, if you're little, you might need somebody bigger to help you with this. Electric drills can be quite dangerous. You need to put a variety of sizes in up to one centimeter across to accommodate different size bees. Don't put too many holes into each piece of wood. Bees, sultry bees, need some space to live apart from one another. If you haven't got a block of wood that you can use, you could just cram some hollowed out wood into the bee home. But try not to use bamboo canes. They can get very wet and don't dry out very easily. And that can encourage some little insects called mites to come and make the bees ill. This is what the final bee house should look like. I've added a few hooks on top of mine so I can put some string so to tie it into wherever I'm going to put it. I've decided to put mine in the apple tree in the garden, safe against the trunk and I'm going to tie it in place with some string. And hopefully some bees will come and make their home there. At the end of the summer season, you need to clean out the bee house. Unblock any of the holes which have any wax in them and clean them out so it's ready for a new set of bees to come and live there next year. You know, we're coming to learn that everything in nature is connected. Flowers need bees to transfer the pollen between them so they can continue to flourish and grow. Bees need the pollen and the nectar from the flowers to feed their young. We need plants and bees so that we can have food and fruit that we can eat so that we can grow. But it's important for us to look after the flowers and the plants. And because of the way we farm these days, because of the way we use land and some of the chemicals that we put on them, bees are struggling. There aren't so many of them around anymore. That's why it's important that we try to look after the flowers and we try to look after the bees, trying to give them a helping hand like we've done today with our bee house. In the Bible, it says when God made the world, he said it was good from the smallest part all the way through, through people to the biggest creatures that you could ever think about. God thinks it's all fantastic. The Bible's even got advice on how we to care for it in our farms, in our gardens. 
It says this, when you pick your food from your fields, don't pick it to the edges, leave some for others. Leave some for people who need food as well as yourself. And leave some for other creatures so that they can flourish and so that you can continue to flourish because they help to make the food that you depend upon. We care for creation because it's right, but we care for creation so that it can care for us. I wonder, wonder what's the biggest animal that you can think of. I wonder what's the teeniest, weeniest animal that you can think of. Or if you're outside like me, look around your garden. What's the smallest thing that you can see? Even the pollen that we've seen through the microscope on the plants. And what's the biggest thing you can see? Is it an animal, a plant, a tree? God says that all this is good. So at the end of our session today, I thought we'd get a bit noisy. I thought we could shout out in the loudest voice we've got, God says that it is good. Are you ready? After three. One, two, three. God says that it's good. Thank you, Creator God, for the wonderful world which you have given us for its beauty and for all the things in it that provide for us and help us to live. Thank you that it cares for us. Help us to care for it. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me again for another Messy Church to Science video. I hope you managed to get out into your garden or if you haven't got a garden into a park or into the countryside somewhere near you and have a look around at the beautiful things you can see there. Maybe if you've got one of those foam microscopes, take it with you and have a look at the smallest, teeniest, weeny things that you can see. And I hope too that you managed to make your bee house and find somewhere to safely put it to help support bees in the garden too. Thanks for joining me and I hope you'll join me again soon when we explore the wonder of creation and the wonder of the creator. God bless and we'll see you again soon.